very warm welcome to worship on this Trinity Sunday from Central Swansea. It's lovely to have you with us wherever you're watching from. Peace to you from God our Heavenly Father. Peace from his Son Jesus Christ who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. The peace of the triune God be always with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servants grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith that we may evermore be defended from all adversities. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Here begins the 27th verse of the 40th chapter of the book of the prophet Isaiah. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not grow faint nor weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always, to the end of the age. Oh, 
Trinity Sunday, the day when we celebrate God and his mystery. Now you may be thinking to yourself, we celebrate God all the time. That's true, but today we celebrate the fact that God is one in three, and three in one, and it all makes sense. Well, it doesn't really make much sense. We worship God as Father, as Son, and as Holy Spirit. Trying to understand this is very difficult. There is a mystery that we worship God in three ways, as the Father who created us, the Son who became one of us and died for us, and the Holy Spirit who strengthens us every day. Now, that can make sense, except it is one God we worship. If you're starting to think, what? You're not the first and you won't be the last. Over centuries, over millennia, people have been trying to work this out. Sometimes it seems as if people have been able to describe the mystery, but have then ended up being heretics. Well, I'm not going to attempt an answer to a big maths conundrum here, which is good, as maths is really not my strong point. But I've been thinking about the word mystery. If we could understand everything about God, then we would know as much as him. Then if we knew as much as God, then we would be as great as God. There is a logic that for God to be God and for us to worship him, then he must be greater than us. In our first reading from Isaiah, we heard the prophet telling people that they can't understand God. I think this is why we can struggle with understanding how God can be one in three and three in one. It is a mystery. And I love this idea of a mystery. I love even more the fact that God invites us to his mystery. By that I mean that as we worship God, we know, thanks to our Bibles and the events that have happened in our lives, that God is with us. We've just come to the end of the story of God becoming one of us. We began this adventure and journey at Advent. It's been a long time. We've looked and thought about God becoming one of us. We thought about his life on earth. We followed him to the cross, saw his resurrection, his ascension, and the giving of his spirit to us. It's been amazing, and we will continue now to praise God for who he is. Then, in Advent, we start all over again. But today, we are entering a new season of the church's year, Trinity. It is the longest season, and it is the time when we look at our growth as we draw closer to God, as we seek to be more like him. Yes, God is a mystery, but he chose not to be a complete mystery when he came to live amongst us, when he promised to be with us always. He invited us to come to know more about him and his love. In the Gospel reading, we heard of Jesus giving a commission to the disciples, a commission to tell people about God, to baptise people into the faith. Jesus was telling us that the most important bit is to bring more people to know him. Another big point is that the command is to baptise in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We are to share the great news that the mystery of God is the mystery that has been revealed to us in part. Jesus went on to say that he would be with the disciples, with us, always. That is amazing. God doesn't want us to keep trying to work him out. He wants us to know that he is with us always. And he wants us to tell others the same. Life is different to normal at the moment, as we all know. And I was reassured, not just by the words from the gospel reminding us that God is with us always, but also with the words from Isaiah, which we heard in our first reading. In these words, we heard God giving a message to the people of Israel through the prophet Isaiah. A message that was full of hope and promise. A message that offers strength. We heard that God would give strength to the weary, he would renew the strength of all who hope in him. 
There was the amazing verse that promised that the people of Israel, and us as well, would soar on wings like eagles. We will walk and not be weary. We will run and not be faint. This is a promise that with God, we have the gift of strength to get us through everything we will ever go through. God gives us strength because he loves us and because he is with us always. Now, that is the most amazing thing we can ever know. God loves us. We may not always understand everything about him, but the most important thing is that he loved us enough to come amongst us and die for us, and that love never ends. He promises to give us strength as we put our trust in him. Super sleuth and a mystery? Nah, not for me. Knowing God loves me, absolutely perfect. God loves us all and will never leave us. We turn now to prayer, let us pray. And the response to the prayers is, we plead before your throne in heaven. We plead before your throne in heaven. We come boldly to the throne of grace, praying to the almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit for mercy and for grace. We plead before your throne in heaven. We pray for the world created by your love, O Lord, for its nations, its governments. We pray for peace throughout the world, for an end to poverty, injustice, conflict. We pray for peace wherever there are troubles. Peace between nations and peace in the hearts of people everywhere. And as we pray for leaders of nations, we pray especially for leaders within our own country at Westminster, in Welsh Government or in local government. For guidance, for vision, for a desire to do what is just and right. Extend to all who are in power your peace, your love, your mercy and grace. We plead before your throne in heaven. We pray for the church created for your glory, O Lord. For its ministry to reflect those works of yours. That we may offer love, welcome compassion. We pray for John, our Archbishop, for our churches and all seeking to minister at this time. Extend to each one of us your salvation, growth, mercy and grace. We plead before your throne in heaven. We pray for families and individuals created in your image, for the lonely, the bereaved, the sick and the dying. Breathe on them the breath of life. Bring them to your mercy and grace. Give them hope in suffering, the assurance of your love with them. We think of all those known to us in need of our prayers at this time. We pray for those who are suffering illness, those who are suffering from loneliness, those who are grieving, all who are troubled in any way at this time. We plead before your throne in heaven We pray for ourselves, for your church, for all whom we remember before you. We remember all those who have died recently and we remember especially those we have known and love but no longer see day by day. Bring us all to bow before your throne in heaven 
to receive life and a pardon, mercy and grace for all eternity. We plead before your throne in heaven. And joining these prayers together we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now may God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.